Okay guys and dolls, welcome to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Um, do you want the Prusa, but you don't like the price tank? Then this could very well be the video review for you. But before we get started, roll those credits. Okay, so the Prusa uh, um, printers have long reigned supreme with regards to um, print quality, with regards to ease of use, ease of setup, perfect for beginners. The problem with them is that that price tag is just a little, a little stingy for people trying to get into them, get into 3D printing, especially when you consider that for the price, um, you can get larger machines and um, you can get, you know, there's a number of different machines that you can get, most notably and popularly things like the Creality brands, so the Ender 3s, the CR10s and things like that. A DIY kit is $749 US dollars, which is give or take about 560 quid. Um, a pre-built one is $1,000 which is give or take about six, seven, it's about 700 pound, give or take. Um, 700 pound buys you a lot of Ender threes. Or if you watch my previous video, a lot of longer LK4 pros. Um, is the machine that good that it, that it genuinely, you know, blows everything else out the water? Well, this, Contrary to what you might think, isn't a Prusa, although really it is. So this is an AliExpress clone. Now the first thing I want to stress is that the Prusa um, is completely open source. So although this is a carbon copy of a Prusa, um, it's not a clone in the traditional sense. So uh, a clone in the traditional sense is something like, um, if you look at the Anycubic i3 Mega, okay, copies the gantry system, um, copies a lot of the bed layout and the size and the volume and things like that. But fundamentally, it's a different machine. It has a touch screen. It doesn't have silent drivers. It doesn't have auto bed leveling. It's not direct drive. There's a lot of other stuff. That, to me, is what you would normally think of when you think of a clone. This is almost, this is almost an, a, a, a Prusa replica. So I bought this as a DIY kit on AliExpress, and this is the magic number, 240 quid. Shipped from China, um, came via, not TNT, it came via um, GLS, sorry, it came via GLS, which was then parcel force um, for the UK. Um, no, no, no shipping, no import tax, £240 DIY kit. Now, what you're thinking is, oh, well, okay, um, what did it come with? So the only thing it doesn't come with is all of the um, is all of the parts that theoretically you could print yourself if you have a printer. If you don't have a printer, Triangle Labs do, um, do a kit, which is what I bought. Um, it's the Mark III kit, so you'll know it's different because there's um, a different bed the way that the bed belt attaches is slightly different on the Mark III. Um, I have bought that. That was 25 quid. Um, so I'm at, I'm in this for 265 odd pound. Still half the price of a DIY kit from Prusa. Um, the only difference I have found so far is it does not have Prusa etched into it at the top. I followed the Prusa guide on their website to build this machine, and it is exactly the same. When you turn it on, it takes you through the same calibration, and it has everything that an original Prusa has. So let me just go through some of the things that an original Prusa boasts. I'll point out as well that you're not getting a knockoff board. This appears to me to be a genuine Einzi main board um, so you'll be getting um, obviously you'll get your filament break detection you get recovered layer shifts you get a bontech extruder a pinder probe 
Um, the Bontech extruder will be a clone. Um, obviously, the, pro the, no the motors aren't labelled Prusa. Um, Vicetech actually do a Bontech clone as well. Um, it's worth noting that the Bontech isn't under an open source, so you know you are buying a knockoff at that point. This is open source, so all they've done is assembled the kit for cheaper. Um, E3D V6 nozzles, again, you're more than likely not getting E3D nozzles, but so what? You get your removable heat bed, your removable sheet. This comes as a spring steel sheet and then a PC sheet for the top. Um, if you wish to print with a spring steel, you can flip it over. And if you wish to print with a PC, you flip it over. I like the flexible build plates when you are finished, especially when I was printing some of these parts. These parts here all printed as a multi-part print. Um, and uh, you literally just lift it off, ping, everything comes off. So very, very happy with that. Uh, power panic? Have you ever tripped the extension cord and lost 20 hours? Oh, okay, power loss print, yeah, okay. And it is silent and it is stable. Like it's on its, um, it's, its anti-vibration legs at the moment, but the frame is solid. Um, and that's, that's your lot. So it goes through the rig, it goes through exactly the same calibration process. Um, I had, uh, it's, it's done its skew correction. So what this will do is it probes, there's, there's magnets underneath the bed. So the pinder probe goes down and it finds the, it does circles until it finds the magnet. When it found the magnet, then it goes to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. That's how it maps out how big the build volume is. Um, so when this one, when the Prusa goes to this side, if this side is materially lower or higher than this side, it sends the Z all the way to the top and, um, and it will butt up against these top pieces here so that you know the Z frame is actually level. Or the X gantry, sorry, not the Z frame. The, so the X gantry is level. Um, it's senseless homing. That all works. Everything is, as I said before, everything is the same, as far as I can tell. Um, I have used an original Prusa, um, and this even has the, uh, the same quirk, which is that the scroll wheel works in reverse. I don't know why. So normally you would turn clockwise to go down a menu, and with the Prusa, you, um, you turn it anti-clockwise. I don't know why you'd want that as a feature, but it's there. So, um, so yeah, so I've done a few prints on this. So I've done a calibration cube. I have done um, the sort of the mandatory 3D printer test, so you can see what that looks like. And then I have done some parts for my next video, uh, or sorry, for my next project, I should say. So, um, answering the golden question, does it print like a Prusa? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> because obviously auto bed levels, I'm going to say this, and some people are going to maybe disagree with me, but I genuinely think 80% of issues with 3D printers stem from not having a perfectly level bed. That's just the reality of it. If your bed is perfectly level, there is a lot of other stuff that the machine will actually forgive, but it needs to be level. This has an auto leveling probe, and it does a really good job, a really good job. So, um, so yeah, it, uh, to me, no brainer, absolute no brainer. The only thing that holds this machine back, and it's the same thing that holds back the original Prusa, is this is a 250 by 210 by 210 build volume. And that is not particularly large. So um, I do, as you've seen from our Instagram, hashtag Instagram, um, the, uh, we do a lot of large prints. So we very often, um, Mike has an S4, we've filled the build volume on that when we're printing. Um, I regularly fill the build volume on my uh, Sidewinder and, uh, and Mike fills it on his, on his enders and his A-nets and, and, and everything. Everything that we have, we, we generally fill the build volume with because, and that's, that's on purpose. 
It's on purpose because we build models to the size that we can with the machines that we have. So we, we literally, you know, that's, that's, that's how it works with us. You know, the, the reason why something is the size that it is, is probably because that's the biggest we could do it. So, um, so yeah, so uh, um, I filled the build plate with this multi-part print and we'll do a little side camera bit in a minute to see what the print quality is like. But this machine is a Prusa for all I, for all, for all I can see. The main board is the same, um, all the controls are the same, the UI is the same, the extruder head looks the same. Apart from the fact that it hasn't got Prusa printed all over it, except for on this part, which, um, which is obviously the parts from Triangle Labs anyway. Um, this is bang on, absolutely bang on. I really can't get over how bang on it is, <laughs> but it is. It is, it's, I, I'm incredibly impressed with the machine. Um, I'll not lie, I have always wanted a, a Prusa, but as I said before, I have machines that suit our needs. So, um, so we have machines that are big, that allow us to, you know, print bigger. We have machines that are enclosed that allow us to print ABS. Uh, we have direct drive to allow us to print flexibles, things like that. Um, I didn't really have a purpose for spending that amount of money to get this machine. If I'd have bought this from Prusa, that's two sidewinders and I'd rather have two sidewinders. Um, but at this price point, you're not beating this on quality, on, you know, on, on build quality, on ease of use. This one, as I said, does come as a kit. They don't, from what I can see, they don't sell it fully assembled. Um, but the kit on Prusa, the, the, sorry, the guide on Prusa, perfect. Very detailed, easy to do, um, fiddly in places. Definitely fiddly in places, but you're building a 3D printer, so it's bound to be a couple of things that are, that are, um, that are annoying. But, um, but yeah, so without further ado, let's show you some of the prints that have come off. Okay, let's start with the mandatory calibration cube. So this is the calibration cube that came off the machine. Um, this was with the uh, standard Prusa Pro simplify 3D profile that they have on their website. You can see that it's got a nice shine to it. Top and bottom layers are really nice. I mean, I cannot, bottom layer, that's your first layer, pretty much perfect. I mean, cannot complain about that at all. So then we have the 3D printer test. So here we have, I don't know if you can see, there we go. These are the overhang tests. This goes to 80 degrees. There we go. This goes to 80 degrees. The other one goes to 75. Um, along here, we have the bridging test, which is damn near perfect as well. Come on. There we go. String and test, a little stringy, so I tweaked the um, I tweaked the profile settings for that. Um, circle tests, really clean. This is all done at a 0.2 layer height, so um, I think I should have gone a little bit lower on the layer height to have got those to have come out properly. But I mean that is as good a test as I have done on any machine, and bang on. These, these are all a multi-part print that I did. So these all printed at once. They printed with supports and just have a look at, let's see if I can get in there. Hold on, there we go. That is a layer, inter that's a support layer, interface layer there. And that, is about as close to perfect as I have ever seen where something has supports. So that printed, there we go, that printed like that. So um, there were supports all around it, printed perfectly. Um, all of these printed really, really nicely as well. Uh, all of these did. 
This is as good a printing as I've had on any machine, for sure. And I challenge that being a multi-part print, there was no stringing. Um, there's a little bit of support material still on that, but all of these printed really, really nicely. There's gonna be next to no post-processing that I need to do on these parts for this build. So, conclusion time. Is it worth buying? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I haven't, I, I, I've seen clones or I've seen, um, I, I've seen times where people have tried to replicate the, uh, the, the, the Prusa to varying degrees of success. Um, I know I mentioned the Inicubic i3 earlier, but that's the one that always springs to mind for me. It is an i3 design, um, but it isn't a Prusa. You know, it isn't produced. The one that I had certainly wasn't producing that kind of quality. It wasn't silent. It wasn't auto bed leveling. The touch screen was naff. Um, it was. It didn't calibrate itself or sort of walk you through in the same way this does. It's a shame, really, that Feistech don't do um, a pre-built one. And the reason being is because I just don't know if you want your first 3D printer to be one that you've built yourself. I personally think it's a great way to learn, but that being said, it's, it's not as accessible to people as one that just comes out of the box. I know you kind of have to assemble an Ender 3, but not really. The extruder and everything comes all pre-built. You just slide it into the, um, you, you slide it into the A-frame, you bolt the A-frame in place and you're done. This, you're building the extruder, you're, you know, you're building the frame, you're, you know, you're putting all the x-axis together and everything else, you know, you're, you're doing, you're, you're building this machine. Um, and it is listed as such, you know, and it's not misleading. Um, it's just that Prusa offer those two options. They offer a, they offer a DIY kit and they offer a, a, a built machine. The built machine is obviously more expensive, but it's much more accessible to a new person joining, you know, joining the 3D printing world. Um, if, you've, if you're good with 3D printers or you understand them, you should absolutely be buying this kit 100%. Um, it's really, really good. I, I'm genuinely impressed with it. And uh, that's all the conclusions that we have, really. Go and buy one. Um, they're, they're, a brilliant, they're a brilliant price. I'll pop a, a link in the description of the video so that you can see. Um, just to be clear, we paid for this with our own money. Um, we don't have any. Um, we don't have any contracts or anything with uh, Feistech, uh, and um, we don't get. It's not an affiliate link, and we don't get any kickbacks or anything like that. This is just a printer that we have that we genuinely really like, and I genuinely recommend.